All right. Tonight it's good to see you in the house of the Lord, and I trust that you'll stand, turn your hymnals to page number 265 in the Red Book. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now save my love lifted me. Appreciate all of you being here tonight, and thank you being, for being in the Lord's house and uh, looking for great things. We'll try to keep it brief tonight, and uh, it's a lot cooler than I anticipated. We have all the doors open back here. Normally we have them closed and everything, but uh, we're letting the air units in the back are working hard, I'll say that. And so we're looking forward to kind of getting everything together. And hopefully it might be one more week. Uh, they're coming to assess everything again for tonnage and get all the parameters around and figure for that for our best uh, money for the buck. Amen. And uh, so you, you continue to pray about that, that God will show us favor in that aspect. And I, I, we just keep praying asking God to meet the need, and he is truly doing that. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Good to have all of you tonight. Join us here in service, those are the present. And then, uh, by the way, of live stream, uh, those avenues, thank you for being here. Pray for, uh, go ahead and make this mention, Brother Eddie's had to leave out of town a few times due to his job. And that's where he's at, and he's uh, probably listening in. He called me earlier, and he said, are we doing it in the church? I said, we're doing it in the church. And uh, so he's probably listening in. Pray for him, and uh, if you would, please. And continue to pray for those on the prayer list and prayer sheet, if you'd be mindful of them. And uh, as I uh, continue to pray for Miss Hazel, Brother Arby, it's good to see him here tonight. Pray for her, and then... Uh, for Miss uh, Hazel, and uh, remember all those as well as we mentioned this morning. I won't go through all the different ones. If you would, I failed to mention this, uh, Frank and Sheila 
I pray for Sheila, if you would please. I failed to mention her this morning. We want to mention her this evening. And if you'd remember them in prayer and be mindful of them. And uh, I greatly appreciate that. And uh, pray for strength for her. Continue to pray for he uh, Faye Hedrick, too. Uh, I know uh, if you'd remember her. And Brenda Bailey wasn't here today. If you'd remember her as well. And, of course, all those that, uh, that stand in need of our prayer as well. Uh, I want to say this. Uh, if for the visa request that was turned in this morning, I want to remind you of those as well. Mary uh, Hopkins and the cancer, and that's Katie Hewitt, family member, so remember them in prayer. And then Brother Marty, uh, his aunt, uh, Marty Gwynn's aunt, Betty Ward, remember her in prayer. And she's in the Duke Hospital with kidney stones and back issues. And if you remember her in uh, prayer as well, pray for Brother Billy Kanoe. I called and checked on him this afternoon. And uh, pray that he doesn't have to go back to the doctor, but he's having a battle with them kidney stones. And uh, he was in much pain, Brother Lee, this afternoon. So if you would pray for him. I told him we prayed for him this morning. He tuned in and uh, he said, watch some of the service today and, uh, and everything. So uh, he, he said, uh, appreciated us praying for him. So remember him in prayer, if you would, please. Remember uh, Tim, uh, uh, Debbie Smith asked us to pray for Tim uh, Worf and uh, pray for him. That's W-R-F, the last name there. Remember them in prayer. I want to say tonight, it's good to see Miss Joe Johnson in service. I told her, I said, my, you don't know what a blessing that is to pastor to see you walk in. And, uh, and uh, she's doing her rehab and, and dealing with that broken hip, had the surgery and recovery. And uh, when I walked in, somebody said, Miss Joe's here. I said, oh, my goodness. And I, Brother Wayne, he said this. He said, I'm so glad to have her. I said, I'm glad you're here. He said, I'm glad she's here with me. And so good to see you, Miss Joe. And we certainly love you and appreciate you. Pray for Miss Doris as well and all the others and uh, have needs. And pray for our military, uh, our soldiers. Pray for Asa and Caleb. Be mindful of them. Pray for our nation and uh, pray for our country. Now, I encourage you, don't forget... Uh, early voting stopped yesterday and on Tuesday. If you have not voted in the primary, please do so. That's important that we do that. And uh, I'm not telling you how to vote, but I'm encouraging you to vote because the primary allows us to have the opportunity to vote for the ones that we'd like to see in a position for November. And so make sure you do that on Tuesday if you have, did not do early voting, so be mindful of that. All right, if, are there any more prayer requests that we need to make mention of tonight before we go open in a word of prayer? Miss Margaret? Hunter? Okay, Hunter and Hudson. Oh, I didn't catch you. Oh, I got that little fan over here. Don't you love that little fan? I drug it out of my office just so we could have a little circulation, throwing air that way. Amen. And, uh, but pray for them, if you would, please. Any others tonight that we need to make mention of? Brother Gerald. Cliff Denny. All right. His net brother Gerald's nephew, Cliff Denny. Pray for him and uh, be mindful of him in prayer. And Miss Eloise, good to see you tonight. We love you, praying for you. And let Carolyn know that we're praying for her as well, Taylor, and everything. All right. Any, anyone else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessings on the service. And thank all of you for being here. And I uh, pray that God will work in our hearts tonight and bless us. And our opening song already, Love Lifted Me. What a great emphasis of reminding us of a great truth. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we come to you tonight. We thank you for your goodness and grace. We thank you for your love and kindness to us. Lord, you're so wonderful, precious and dear. Lord, there's none like you. Father, we love you tonight, and uh, we praise you for who you are 
and how wonderful you are uh, to us. God, there's many needs and things that we're praying about. And God, we, we just seek your face on behalf of all these individuals. Lord, will you minister to our hearts and our lives tonight? God, meet every need, meet every aspect of, uh, in our lives that we need. And Lord, we'll give you that we need. And then God will give you the praise, honor, and glory for everything. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. I want to thank our guests for being here tonight. If this is the first time you've been with us and visited with us, just fill out the guest cards that the ushers gave to you and drop that in. We have a gift for you as you leave this evening as well. Thank you so much for taking time and coming and being. It's good to have Nathan and Teresa with us tonight. Thank you so much for stopping in and being with us and everything. Look forward to getting to know them better as well. All right, uh, I believe that covers everything on my part. As far as announcements, oh, I'm used to Brother Eddie doing that, aren't I? Let me just make a note in the bulletin. Uh, of course, it's just uh, the general aspects. Don't forget Wednesday evening Bible study and next Sunday, and of course, Memorial Weekend. And uh, he shared with us some other things this morning upcoming. So just look on the events calendar. And the bulletins are at each entry uh, back here as well as in the foyer. And the prayer requests, uh, uh, prayer requests bulletins. And I believe there's some event calendars at both places as well. All right. God bless you, Brother Mike. All right, tonight, would you once again stand with us, page 358 in the Red Book. Won't it be wonderful there? When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful? to receive the Lord's tithes and offerings and let's bow our heads in prayer our heavenly father tonight we want to thank you for the good day that you blessed and honored us with Lord for the privilege to give thank you Lord and I pray that you'd use this offering Lord to touch the hearts of those who do not know the Lord and God I pray that you'd receive all the glory bless the gift and give her alike in Jesus name amen <laughs>
I asked him which one of these mics was good tonight. <laughs> I didn't want to be caught like y'all this morning. Here is uh, my dad's favorite song, When He Reached Down His Hand For Me. Once my soul was astray from the heavenly way I was wretched and blind as could be but the Savior in love turned my darkness to day when he reached down his hand for me when the Savior reached down for me he had to reach way down for me I was lost and undone without God or His Son when He reached down His hand for me. Now since the Lord gave me peace heaven's joys never cease lord i'll give my life unto thee lord guide my feet hold my hand less with thee lord i'll stand cause you reached way on down for me now when the savior reached down for me he had to reach way on down for me oh i was lost and undone without God or His Son when He reached down His hand for me. All right. Take your Bible and go to Jude. We're going to streamline here now. I, I'm not going to finish the entire message tonight uh, in the book of Jude as we've been going through on Sunday nights that passage of Scripture. And uh, there I have about, I think it's four or five points. And so I know that I'm not going to finish that tonight. But I want to look at a couple thoughts and in introductory and then a couple, maybe a couple points of the message. And Jude and uh, verses 20 and 21. And uh, I believe I've got one or maybe two more messages out of the book of Jude, and we'll have concluded this. We've been in Jude for a little while, and we'll finish up with this. And uh, certainly love studying the Word of God, and I like expository type preaching because. It, it is a building. Uh, you, can, you can preach topically for a short while and you'll, and you'll deplete yourself as a preacher but uh, because of the way those style messages are. And they're good. I love and I still preach topical. I like to do that. But I like studying the Word of God. It builds us. In verse number 20, as we see here tonight, he said, But, but ye beloved... Building up yourselves 
on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God and looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Uh, I'm, as I began to look, I titled this Preserving Our Heritage. Preserving Our Heritage. I want to remind us once again of Jude. Uh, Jude's desire was to write to the believers and encourage them and write to them concerning salvation. But he felt the need and he resorted to the content of our faith. Notice in verse number 3, Beloved, I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. And he said, It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for your faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Of course, in the previous verses, he, he wanted to write, as we looked at in the early part of sermons that are related to the book of Jude, as we began our uh, study through this element and preaching through this, he wanted to speak to them about salvation, but then he moves to the very element of dealing with the, of the aspect of contending for that which was right for that which was holy. And as we began to examine from that point till just our previous sermon, uh, he began to warn about the apostates. We know what an apostate is. Apostate is one who denies or will not accept the truth of God and who he is. Uh, they, they come in, uh, they, they maneuver themselves into the early church to sow discord and disbelief and cause others not to have faith in God and walk in the ways of God. So we understand the aspects, he's, and that's why he's writing. He's saying, watch, they will slip in unawares and try to deceive you about the truths of the gospel and the ways of God. And you need to be conscious of their moving and how they conduct themselves. And so in the previous verses, he sounds the warning to recognize and oppose heresy. And now he sounds the call to defend and maintain what we have been entrusted with. He said, listen, I've called you to contend, but listen, let's preserve truth. Let's hold the standard of truth high and let's exalt truth and magnify truth, and let's preserve it for the next generation. There are those who would destroy and do away with every aspect uh, as far as the truth of the gospel and things of God. They'll want to deceive you and twist the very words of truth. But you stand because of the reason why we need to stand, and that is to preserve that which is holy, that which is upright, that which is pure, that which is righteous, that we preserve the element, not just for us in our day, but the next generation that comes after us. Sometimes I wonder, do we ever consider the gravity of what we are engaged in? Do we understand what we are engaged in? Sometimes I fear that much of the time we gather with an attitude, maybe a, what we might say is a careless attitude, about the service of the Lord and the things of God. Our minds sometimes, I believe, uh, our minds are somewhere maybe on other things and we pay little attention to the, the elements of things that are, that are mentioned in the Word of God and we uh, tend to, we hear the truth of God. Now, notice I'm using a plural pronoun in this, not saying you, but we, because we all are the same way. We are all flesh and blood. And there's a tendency that sometimes we hear 
truth and we hear the elements uh, that we need to hear from the Word of God but then we don't make the changes and we do not make the strides or steps forward that we need to take uh, as far as uh, and we take, make no change at all in our lives. See, I, I, I pray and I want these verses and I trust that this time in Jude is challenging us and these verses will challenge us by revealing what we have been entrusted with. Do we really grasp hold of what our, as John said in 1 John chapter number 1, he said our hands have handled and held and he, uh, the word of truth, the word of God. The word. We think about the element. What is what will be left for future generations if we fail? If we falter, what is for future generations? See, we cannot fail. We must not fail. There's too much at stake. You say, well, what, what are you trying to say? I'm saying that we are to preserve the truth. Notice what John, or excuse me, John, I've got John on the mind. Jude says here in verse number 20. I want to look, first of all, at our identification and what Jude is saying. Verse number 1, or 20 says this in the first part. But ye beloved, but ye beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. This is the third time that we're reminded that Jude was writing to the beloved. Those who could identify and those that identified with Christ. And we understand that Jude begins to speak to those and that word, Beloved, those who are esteemed and dear and worthy of love. He was writing to the Christian believers, those who could identify with Christ. And they identified with Christ because their lives had been truly changed by the grace of God. Allow me to remind you uh, to whom we belong as children of God. Jude, he's reminding us, see, if you are, you've been saved, you, you have been blood-bought, you have been bought with a price. Paul reminds us who we are, and Jude is speaking to those who he knows has put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ, and they're walking in the ways of God, and he's speaking to them who has professed uh, God personally, and they have a relationship with God. Notice, we, are, we belong to the Lord Himself. Jude's saying, remember, when he makes that up, but ye beloved, you that have been born and bought. Ephesians 5, 30 said, for we are members of His body, of His flesh and His bone. He, we're, we need to understand when He's speaking, know who we are in Christ. Be mindful of who you are in Christ. I do not know about you tonight, but, but that is a sobering thought to me. Think about this. We are identified with the Holy Lamb of God. We are identified with the Holy Lamb of God. We are a part of the body of Christ. Boy, what a joy to think about that we're saved and we know God and what a privilege. I think about David in Psalm 63 when he says, Oh God, thou art my God. What a privilege to say the creator of everything, the one that has redeemed us, indwells us, and we know him personally, and we communicate with him, and we fellowship with him. We have a relationship with him because of the very fact of the blood of Jesus Christ. What the blood has been applied. I still haven't got over that song this morning. I know we sing it, but there's power in the blood. Amen. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood. Aren't you thankful of that? The cleansing power of the blood. We know the redeemed belong to the greatest body 
known to man. And you say, what is it? Christ, we are part of Christ. See, Christ loved us enough to give himself up on the cross. It is our responsibility to identify him. And see, Jude is saying, but ye be loved. He wants us to understand that we have experienced the love of God when Romans 5, 8, Paul reminds those, but God commended his love toward us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And 1 John reminds us of the truth, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we might be called the sons of God. He said, understand you are loved by the Master. We live in a day when the world has rejected Christ and they reject Christ. And it seems as though there, it, it tends to uh, get worse in that aspect. Uh, we love the Lord and we try to share the truth of God's love, but it seems like there's more uh, that are rejecting the things of God. It's time for God's people. Let's lift our heads. Let's smile and walk forward and identify Christ and who He is and what He's done for us, He can do for others. The changing of our lives. And, uh, and understand it's time for us to publicly identify uh, Him, who He is, but also identify ourselves with the Master. Now, He said, but ye beloved... He, say, he reminds us in the first three words of this, our identification. We are children of God. We are beloved by God. But notice this, our foundation. Our foundation. He said uh, in the, remain, uh, the next part of, he said, but, but at ye beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith. What a statement. Building up yourself on your most holy faith. Jude is speaking of their faith in Christ. He's speaking to them that are loved by God and, are, uh, and that are the beloved, and he refers to them as other children of God. And I want us to just take for just a moment and consider the heritage of this body of believers. Notice many of you can remember the saints of God who were faithful to the Lord that you have known through the ages. They have walked with God. They lived a life that honored the Lord. No doubt the church has had her share. Uh, you know, I know every church has had their share of problems, but understand it's built on a solid foundation, which is Christ. When I, we were standing there in the Holy Land, uh, there at Caesarea Philippi, Man, I, I, we was talking, and, and uh, I can't remember if it was Dr. Venable or who it was. Uh, maybe it was Brother Joe who spoke there, but somebody uh, we're talking about. Here's the point. Jesus asked Peter. He asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? And then Jesus, in that conversation, uh, uh, he reveals this fact upon this rock. Upon this rock. To Peter, he says, I will build my church. It wasn't Peter who was referred to as the rock, but he's wanting us to understand that the church and every element of the church is built upon him, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said upon this rock, he didn't say upon that rock, but upon this rock. I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They will not prevail against it. Now, look at the place. Now, I think about Jude. I was thinking about this as I was studying this and going through. Think about Jude. Jude is referring to the day in which it was uh, they lived. Caesarea Philippi was a place of pagan worship. There is nothing there to this day other than a sight of going to sea. But in that day, it was a place where people dwelled of many religions. And you see the rocks there carved out if you've been there. And you see the elements of structures that 
that they have recovered from that place uh, that they have on display that you can see. It was once a thriving place, but God had a word about Caesarea Philippi. And he stands in a, in a place of pagan worship, of idolatry. And he says, listen, you see all this that's here. Now you say, well, we don't see all that in Scripture. Where are you getting all this from? Well, I'm reading between the lines in Greek, okay? But I'm just trying to paint a picture for us. Here he stands in the midst of uh, idolatry. In a world that, that is, uh, has chosen to put their own gods on display and worship them. It's kind of like Paul said, well, I mentioned this morning, when Paul was there and he said, hey, I see all your gods here. You got the Greek god Diana and he's going, he's seeing all these monuments and then there's one of the unknown god. Uh, they, they just have the unknown. And of course, Paul begins to identify Christ there. But think about this. Jesus is standing there He's already revealed to them who he is. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He's already revealed to them who he is. And they're, they're walking with them, with Jesus himself. And he's teaching them. They've seen him do mighty things and mighty acts. And yes, there were people that had believed and their faith was in the Lord. But understand this, Jesus is asking the disciples, do you really know who I am? And of course, Peter goes, oh yeah, you're the Son of God. And he said, hey, the Father, God has revealed it to you. You understand. And upon me, this rock, I will build my church. You see, the church is built on a solid foundation. A solid foundation we would not enjoy what we have today if it was not so. See, the saints of God through the ages have helped to lay the foundation for the work that is being carried out today. I, yes, uh, on yesterday, uh, this week as I ministered to the family, uh, they said, I told them, you know, we were talking about how, you know, here they are from Pennsylvania and they have friends and neighbors and all here. And uh, on Wednesday when I sat in the funeral home with them, and that's the first time I'd met them, and I said, uh, they were talking about, well, what are we going to do? We'd like to have a meal. Is there a restaurant or something? And uh, they, at the funeral home, they go, well, I don't know. They looked at, she said, Pastor might have a better idea about how to do things on that than myself. And I said, well, I know where to find a meal. Hey, Amen, you can tell that. And, uh, but I said, normally our church, if they're part of the church, we take and, and our church comes together and, and they do that. And they said, well, we don't expect the church to do that. We want to go and sit down and where we can talk and, and be with one another. And I said, well, I will say this. They said, maybe if we could cater something. And I said, well, uh, maybe we can get that worked out for you and help you in that direction. And we'd be more than happy for you to... Uh, to utilize, we'll open the fellowship hall and allow you to do that. And uh, then later on in, in the conversation, or, or a couple days later, they, uh, we didn't ask this, how much, how much, uh, uh, how much are y'all going to charge us to use your fellowship hall? What's the fee? I said, there's no fee. We want to be a blessing to you. And here was my statement to them. I said, this is not just buildings to be set on the side of the road somewhere. The reason this church was established in the foundation of this church since 1952, this has been a place that we have had that set aside to minister to families in our community and those around us. This ministry is not some Ephesus that's sitting on the hill, but this ministry, uh, the structure and the building of it is designed so that we can meet the needs of others, and that's what the church is about. 
And Jesus, what did he do? He met the needs of others. And that's what we began to see. And see, I believe this, the foundation was laid for the work years ago. I wasn't around. Some of you weren't around. Or if you were, you were young kids. <laughs> Amen. In those days, I want to get in the age thing here. We all get in trouble. That's always a touchy thing. Amen was up there and I introduced my sister again the other night. We were, a few weeks ago we were singing in East Bend on, on a Thursday night and I got I said it's good to have my mother and uh, here tonight. It's good to have my brother-in-law, Bob, but uh, and my sister. I said now she tells me all the time, do do not ever tell my age. I said I will tell you this. Uh, she was 14 when I was I was born and I'm 55 now. She goes, you might as well told her, you know. I always tease her. I love doing that because that really gets her. But think about the avenue of the church. Who's the, who laid the foundation? Someone laid the foundation for this ministry before we were ever here. And you say, what's our responsibility? Our responsibility is to maintain the foundation and preserve it for the next generation of those coming down the road. That's our responsibility. I, I think about our young people in the Sunday school classes, and of course, uh, I think about our couples class, all the avenues there, you know, and we want to expand things. We want things to grow, and, and of course, everybody's kind of make, trying to make strides back after our two years of... of uh, I want to say almost destruction, uh, but the devil's fought the church. But let me say this, the church still stands, amen. The church still stands. That, we, that the foundation has been laid, and we need to be committed to carry it out today. The church, has it was built upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and the torch has been handed down to who? Us. To each of us. That torch is handed to us. Now, and now our race is to run, and our battle is to fight. I, I do not, I certainly do not want to be a pastor who is remembered for leading a, con, a congregation astray, but I want to be a pastor that leads a congregation and, uh, and, and truth. Uh, we understand the groundwork has been laid. And we are to move forward. See, the world is pushing their liberal agenda and the things and opposing God and the things of God. And churches must are, are to be pushing to become uh, better and preserving and delivering truth and standing for which that is right in Ephesians 2.20. Paul reminds us, the Bible teaches us that our lives and our churches upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. It reads, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Notice what Paul said, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He's the foundation. We looked just a moment ago as I reflected back in the book of Matthew, as Jesus is there, he said, upon this rock, understand, Jesus Christ is the foundation. The foundation has already been established. We need uh, the same doctrine and the teaching that the apostles shared, that which Christ is the cornerstone. I'm not interested in finding something new. I, like, I was reading this last week, and uh, I remember preaching a message years ago, and that brought back some thoughts to my mind as I was reading uh, the very elements as, you know, I'm not interested in finding some new way. I'm like Jeremiah. I'm asking God for the old paths. I know times will change. Things will change around us. Uh, you've seen it change. I've seen it change in my lifetime. Things will continue to change around us. But there's some things that are prominent in our life that we need to understand that there's no variables in it. There's no variable in God. 
because He's the same yesterday, today, and will be forever. There's no variableness in Him. We understand the truth that we are walking in the, His way. I'm not interested in some new way. I'm interested in following the truth, the biblical est, uh, elements of the Word of God. And I want my life built upon them, but I want to preserve them for the next generation that's coming. I've, I've seen the power of God work. We all have as believers. We've seen God do extraordinary things. We, I think, sometimes look on the past and we say, well, look what happened there. And I, I'm... I'm as guilty as anyone. I remember the days of, man, I'll tell you right now, church is packed out. Uh, there was a day the houses of God were filled and people came. You had a revival meeting. The pews were full every night. Preachers would preach. The altars were filled. There was just a move of God. You say, well, and I... I, I, I reflect on those and I say, I remember when. You remember when. But understand, God can still do it today. Just like He did then. God hasn't changed. Things around us change. Society changed. The philosophy of man changes. But God's Word never changes. It is the same. I have changed. You say, you have changed. Oh, yes. I've been, I can about sing that song that fellow made up that time. I was small and now I'm big and now I'm in between, don't you see? <laughs> this guy had a, he always made up songs at camp and I was like, ooh, I can, I can deal with that, amen. Things change, we change, but there's some principles that Jude is saying to us as he said, building yourselves yourselves own your most holy faith. Remember the foundation. Remember where you stand as a believer. We've seen the power of God work. And I believe the question as we close tonight is this, what are you building your life upon? What are we building our lives upon? See, I want to build on a solid foundation that is sure. Uh, I'm not going to go there tonight. It's a, a whole different message and thought. But think about this when he said, The wise man what? We sang the song as children. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon... We sang that song. Then, the, and then we sang that song. Uh, the foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. I've used that illustration and I've thought about it so many times. When we went, I said something about Caesarea Philippi, but Caesarea by the sea. When we were there, you have the amphitheater. I had the privilege of singing in that amphitheater. I didn't intend on singing, but Joe Arthur's there, and when Joe Arthur's there, you never know what's going to happen. He said, hey, get up there on that stage. Terry, go up there and sing. I said, uh, you sure? There was people all in there. He said, get up there and sing. And the song that Brother Lee sang tonight, I, I sang that uh, song, the first verse in a chorus, when he reached down his hand for me. I thought, Here's this 5,000 seat amphitheater and I'm going, how am I going to fill this thing up? I got a set of lungs, but I don't think I can fill this up. And I reared back and on the first note when I said, what's my, and man, I belted it out and the sound hit me right back. I was amazed. And everybody quieted off. There were people talking and it got just as quiet and I sang that verse and chorus of when the Savior reached down for me. When I finished singing, the people, they started applauding. And Brother Joe, he grabbed me when I got back over. He said, oh my goodness, just think you gave them the gospel in a nutshell right there when the Savior reached down for me. And there was people from all countries around the world. Now, behind that, if you're standing on and looking at the amphitheater, you turn around and look the other way, right there is the Mediterranean Sea. 
and part of the arena that was out there. And some of the walls, they said, was part of the palaces or things or whatever it was. And you walk up to on the end of that and you look and there's the Mediterranean Sea popping in and out. I was like, where's the rest of this city? And they said, it's in the water. And I said, why is it there? They said, well... Herod was a great builder. He had gone to Rome and been taught by some great architects and everything. Well, when I got back, it wasn't just, I don't know, a few months. Uh, or maybe, maybe it was after I moved out west, because that was 2011. And we'd moved out west to start Beacon Baptist Church there in Gig Harbor. And uh, I was going through YouTube, and there was a documentary or I think it may have been YouTube, I don't know what it was now, but it was a documentary on, on Caesarea. And they, they had divers and they went down and they were showing how the city was built. And they had brought sand in and there are still columns and they were showing on this uh, docu uh, documentary of how that there are columns and things and how that King Herod put it around. And they said the reason the city, I watched this almost 50 minute docu uh, documentary on this. And they said the reason, now these are not Christian people. These are people just talking about exploring and doing. They said the reason the city did not exist anymore. And they give a picture because of the walls and things that was out. It had a, a private harbor and it was a beautiful, magnificent city. Where did it go? They said it's in the sea. Because Herod failed to do this. Herod failed to build properly. He knew the elements of building. Brother Mike's a builder. Now, Brother Mike and I, we, we, I have, I, I've built foundations and built buildings and things, and Brother Mike does. But we both will tell you, Brother Mike will tell you, you don't have to take my, just my word for it, but I believe he'll... He would stand and say the same thing tonight. If you don't have a proper foundation, what you put on top of that is not going to stand. It's going to crumble. It's going to crash. And Herod, who had, was a great architect, and had a great knowledge of building, built something upon the sand. How foolish he was. And I thought, my, 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 how when I read that text... Every time I read that in the book of Matthew chapter 7, the end of it, I think about Herod now that I've been over there to the Holy Land. Jude is saying, Know for on what foundation you have built. Build upon Jesus Christ who is the rock. Build yourself yourself on the most holy faith and if you build upon him your faith will not be shaken you will not be weary amen you will stand the test of the storm and the test of time he says remember who you are in Christ but remember on what, what foundation you have built your lives and that is upon Christ father tonight thank you for your word thank you for encouraging us in your word as we ponder the elements and the challenges that we have in the Word of God tonight. He said, preserve the heritage. The heritage will not stand unless we understand who we are in Christ and we walk forward in Him and our relationship with Him. But also, it will not last if our faith is not built upon the right foundation. Lord, thank you for the challenge from your word tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we stand to our feet tonight, uh, we have a verse of invitation. Mark, we all play tonight. With our heads bowed, the altar's open. Maybe you're like me saying, Lord, help me to understand who I am in Christ, but also help me stand upon the firm foundation. Who I'm built upon. 
Oh, I like that selection tonight. How firm a foundation. We build upon Him, we'll stand forever. said, Lord, help me to stand on that which I've been planted. tonight thank you for the challenge from your word father help us to stand help us to stand in these days preserving preserving our heritage lord help us to lift you and exalt you up and father thank you for your word tonight in christ's name we pray amen sing with me this as we close tonight every day with jesus is sweeter than the day before sing it together every day with jesus is sweeter than the day before every day with jesus i love him more and more jesus saves and keeps me and he the one I'm waiting for every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before amen pray for the church this week pray as they get everything around and pray for God's leadership and direction in that pray one for another pray for those on the prayer list and thank all of you for being here tonight Give me just a moment. I'm going to make my way to the back door tonight. Thank you for being here. Greet those around you, if you would, please. God bless you. You are dismissed.